everybody, welcome back to our channel. My name is Lindsay, I'm the fantasy fan. And I'm Danielle, your resident romantic. And we are friends. So the book ends, and today we are bringing you our five star predictions video. Yes. So essentially, we picked, we went through our Goodreads, Amazon accounts, blah, 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 to figure out which books, based on their synopsis, sounded like we were going to give them five stars. Now, personally, I didn't pick any sequels because it would be very easy to be like, <laughs> Jennifer L. Arbentrout, Crown of Gilded Bones, five stars, well, no duh. Um, so I tried not to pick series continuations, um, so that was where my thought process was, but I have a mix of three books that are already out that I already own, and two books that have not come out yet, but I will purchase once they arrive on shelves. And I have three books physically here that I already own, and two books that are already out, but I will be reading on ebook. Solid. Okay, so Danielle, would you like to start us off? I suppose so. So the first one is Hopeless by Colleen Hoover. Uh, in, girl. Case, in case you are just now tuning in to our channel, I am a huge fan of Colleen Hoover. She reads really deep, poignant, thought-provoking romance, and I, I just, I love her books so much. They're always tearjerkers for me, but they're like, they're worth it. So this one is about Skye and Dean. They are in high school. Um, it sounds like they both have maybe some promiscuous pasts with also some dark secrets, also maybe some scars they have to get over. And based off of the synopsis, it sounds like Sky likes Dean, but doesn't really think that anything could happen with them. Mm. And Dean is like, but you're the one. I have to chase you. Which I'm always hands down <laughs> for a story yeah. like that. Um, so the fact that there is a lot of getting over scars. Mm -hmm. It sounds like the guy is going to be chasing her a lot and showing her that they are meant to be together. And the fact that it's Colleen Hoover, I think that nothing could go wrong on this. I have loved every other book that I've read by her. Um, I think both of them actually were five out of five stars that I've read oh, by her. Awesome. So I'd like to keep the streak going. So the first book for me that I think is going to be a five stars is The Martian by Andy Weir. Um, first of all, I love this cover. It's really cool. Um, and so... This was made into a movie with Matt Damon, and everybody really likes it. I've never seen the movie or read the book, obviously. Um, but essentially, we're following an astronaut who becomes one of the first people to walk on Mars. And now uh, it says he's sure he'll be the first person to die there. Oh. Um, so after a dust storm forces his crew to evacuate the planet while thinking that he's dead, he finds himself stranded on Mars' surface, and he has to try and find a way to get back home. But I've heard this is very, like funny i've heard this is like really? i've heard that there's humor in it which ah. to me i love sci-fi books that have like an element of like witty <laughs> kind of like quirky humor to it and it right. sounds like this might fit the bill um i've also been in just a really big sci-fi mood r lately so hopefully when i get to this sooner rather than later i'm going to really enjoy it all right but if you're in a sci-fi mood have you read warcross yet no then i don't want to hear it <laughs> Next. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Next for me is Shameless King by Maya Hughes. Depending on uh, what order we're going to put the videos, you may have already seen this in our other video, or you're going to be seeing this in one of our future videos, because I gave this to Lindsay as part of our blind date video. She was not the biggest fan of it. I, however, still hold out hope for it. A um, couple of keynotes, you have Declan and McKenna. They were apparently rivals in high school, had this big blowout, and now that they're in college, suddenly she gets transferred to his college. She has to take the same class mm -hmm. he's in, put in the same seat right next to him, and she's basically giving him the cold shoulder all the time, and he's mm -hmm. like, but I love her. Let me <laughs> see if I can <laughs> thaw her out. It is also an adult romance, so there are going to be some very steamy scenes in here. Yes. Um, I am just excited for it. I have not read by Maya Hughes yet, mm -hmm. but when I was doing the blind date shopping for you, I did discover her, and I like looked at her backlist of like all these books she has, and they all sound very tantalizing and exciting. Ooh, and tantalizing. <laughs> yes, bring out the big vocabulary for this one. <laughs> so I am just very excited for it. Um, while Lindsay did have some things that she didn't like about it. One thing she didn't like was that it didn't end up being an actual hate to love, which is what the back sounds like. Mm -hmm. This is actually more encouraging for me because I am not always the biggest fan of hate to love. Well, yeah. So even, up your alley. Then. Right. <laughs> even though she gave it a three out of five, I'm going to hold out hope that this is still going to be a five out of five for me. So we will see. I hope it works out for you. <laughs> I hope it does too. So the next book that I think is going to be a five out of five stars for me is Made in Korea by Sarah Sook. It is not out yet. I believe it doesn't come out I'm looking on Goodreads right now. It doesn't come out till May 18th, so I've got about a month left, but I will be purchasing it 
when it comes out because I have been in the biggest K drama mm-hmm. obsession of my life. She's been telling me this. I should have seen this coming. Yeah. So this book is pitched as Frankly in Love, which is another book by David Yoon that's out meets Shark Tank in a um, comedy kind of style book about two Korean American students who are butting heads and maybe falling in love while running Ooh. competing Korean beauty businesses at their high school. Um, oh, wow. I know. So it's not hot there. I know. You need to unpack that sandwich. A lot sandwich. of layers. <laughs> unpack that sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Take it off. Take all those layers off. Right. Um, Does it have so... Manny? Does it have mustard? <laughs> what do we got? <laughs> so we're following Valerie, um, who they run a, a, she runs like a beauty kind of cape beauty brand from her high school um, because they do like student entrepreneurship things at her school. We didn't have this at my high school. But no. I, I, I've seen it. It's also in the Henna Wars. I was going to say there's a yeah, kid who used to a... sell chocolate bars out of his backpack at my place, but <laughs> sounds gross. That was one of my best <laughs> Melted. <laughs> you like, know who you are if you're watching. this melted Kit Kat. <laughs> and then he expanded to gum and some oh. sodas too, so oh. he really grew it. Okay. Well, anyway, back to, your, <laughs> back to your book. <laughs> Um, and so she wants to use that money that she earns from this to go to Paris because that's been like her, her lifelong goal. Mm -hmm. And I say lifelong, she's like 17, but there's a new kid in class named Wes, um, who his mom gives him all these like K-pop inspired like beauty, um, samples or beauty products or whatever. And he starts selling them to make friends essentially, and then takes all the business away from Valerie. And then they start to butt heads because... He starts to be like, well, maybe I'm good at this and maybe this is what I want to do. And she's like, that sounds kind of cute. Taking all my money. I know. It's just really <laughs> cute. And I can't wait for them to fall in love. And I'm really excited for all of the K-pop references. And hopefully it reads like a K-drama because that's what I'm looking for. So uh, it looks like it's going to be a five out of five and the cover's really cute. Plus it is a hate to love, which like automatically at least puts it out of three. It literally, yeah, I can't <laughs> give it anything less. So. Yeah. Uh, the next one that I will be reading on ebook is The X Talk by Rachel mm. Lynn Solomon. That one sounds so good. Yes, I have been, I've been on the wait list for a while. Uh, everyone is excited to get their grubby little hands on it. <laughs> I am one of those people. Um, we have read the, another book by Rachel Lynn Solomon, which was Today, Tonight, mm. Tomorrow. That focused on a high school population. I believe this is more of an adult, mm-hmm. kind of romance, but adult book in general. Basically, you have a male and a female. Sorry, I don't know their names. Uh, A male and a female. um, They work at a radio station, and kind of this new gimmick that the radio station wants to do is this, what, an ex kind of segment Mm -hmm. where it's like you talk about your exes and stuff like that. Yeah. And so in order to really sell it, the radio show was like, hey, you man, you female, pretend to be exes. (laughs) And so it's it's kind of like not quite Mm. a hate to love, but also a little bit because they have to pretend that they're... Exes? Yeah. Right. So it just, it sounds very cute. And it is, I I think it's an interesting concept. Rachel and Solomon with Mm. Today, Tonight, Tomorrow, I gave it, I think, a 4.5 out of 5. That's what I gave it to. And the only thing that was missing was that it was a little cliche at the ending. And I feel like with adult books, you maybe have more of a broader spectrum of how to end it or Mm. what to do for the climax. So I think that this will really be able to bring it home for a 5 out of 5 for me. Yeah, I'm really excited to hear what you think about it since yeah. we both really liked the other book by her. So yeah. I really have high hopes that if you like it, I was like, I'm going to really read that. So, right. so it's my, my, sounds good. My high hopes are like above <laughs> the camera right now. You can't see it, but it's there. Next book for me that I think is going to be a five out of five stars is Warbreaker by Brandon Sanderson. Of course, I had to go order the UK edition because <laughs> is she cute? But also because She's very cute. Warbreaker in the United States is only available in mass market paperback. Which makes no sense because it's very popular and usually mass market books are reserved for not popular or romance, which this is neither. So I don't know. U.S. Right. publishing. What the fuck? So, I just really like, keep talking. I just really like this. So cover. essentially, um, this is a Brandon Sanderson book and I've read from him before and I know I like him. And this is right now it's a standalone, mm-hmm. which is appealing to me. Um, but it's. A story of two sisters that are princesses, and um, the god king is someone that they ha- one of them has to marry. And so one of them has been chosen to marry him, and then something happens, but then the other sister has to go in her place. Oh. And I, she's not, I don't think she's prepared. So I think she has to kind of, like, scramble. But it, I know that it's not, Brandon Sanderson doesn't write romance heavy. Mm-hmm. 
there are oftentimes like a romance aspect in this book, but it's not, he's a fantasy writer. So, um, the world sounds really interesting because theirs is a world in which those who die in glory return as gods. A world transformed by biochromatic magic, a power based on an essence known as breath, which can be collected one unit at a time from individual people. But it's worth it. By using breath and drawing upon the color in everyday objects, a manner of miracles and mischief can be performed. Wow. So the magic system sounds like something I've never heard of before. Um, but it just sounds really good. The cover's really cool. I like that there's going to be a sister dynamic in it because I really have found that I enjoy reading sister dynamics as of late. So this one looks like a five out of five in my eyes. That one looks like a 600 page book in my <laughs> eyes. It's junky. A little bit, but that's okay. Oh, you know what? It actually says on the cover, magic as you have never seen it before. I agree with that. <laughs> so that makes sense. The next one for me that I think will be a five out of five is Cruel Prince by Holly Black. I know. I'm very late on this train here. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. Um, Lindsay made me buy it, uh, like, last year or something. I actually tried to avoid the hype of The Cruel Prince, but then I realized it was by Holly Black, and I've actually read The Coldest Girl in Cold Town by Holly Black. I read that somewhere in high school. I don't remember a whole lot about it. I just know that the ending was fantastic and that the writing style as a whole I really, mm -hmm. truly loved. There also was some romance in there. Um, and it was written in a way where even if it didn't end like I wanted it to, it was still, like, perfect. I almost yeah. said chef's kiss. I gotta stop. <laughs> You've put that chef's on me kiss. now, so. You're welcome. <laughs> Thanks. So you have Jude and her sisters. Their parents were murdered, and they are now taken into basically the fairy capital. Mm -hmm. And the fae are not always biggest fans of humans. So Jude comes across Prince Cardin, who is, I believe, the youngest son of the High King, and, uh, basically, Jude and Cardin do not get along, from what Lindsay tells me. Cardin <laughs> straight up bullies Jude. Yep. Which I know what you're thinking. Danielle, you don't really like hate to love. Especially that kind. Which, no. <laughs> you're right. I don't. Um, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't about me, though. <laughs> so, I... Even knowing that, I'm gonna take a chance and say this is gonna be a 5 out of 5. Because it's a hate to love, which means there is gonna be love eventually. And... Holly Black has written romance and books in general in such a way that mm -hmm. I really enjoy it. Like, I couldn't find anything wrong with the way that she wrote a romance, even if it's not perfectly how I wanted it. Um, also, even if it's a hate to love and there is some bullying in the beginning, a lot of times when a guy bullies a girl, it's because he secretly likes her. So don't spoil it. But I'm hoping that is the reason behind it. Uh, so <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> I do know it's a series, so if I end up liking it, then I guess I'll actually dive bomb on the train and actually read the whole thing but there we'll see go. five out of five possibility there the next book that i have is something that i'm so excited to come out so this doesn't come out till june i think at the june 15th so i have like two months until it comes out april 5th. yes i had to, <laughs> forgot where we were in the months and how their orders went um but this one sounds so up my alley so it's for fans of uprooted and the bear and the nightingale which is the book that Danielle got me, yes. and Ag and Uprooted was the first book that I read in 2020, which really kicked off this my re love of reading. <laughs> so um, it's about these people who follow this like rule where if there's a second daughter born, they have to be sacrificed to the wolf in the woods. Um, however, a second daughter has not been born in like centuries, but our main character, her name is Red, so it's a little Red Riding Hood spin. Cute. And so she's a second daughter, so she's going to have to be sacrificed to the wolf. Um, and he's supposed to, when, when she does that, when she gets sacrificed, the wolf is supposed to return this world's captured gods. So there's, the gods are missing, which sounds very interesting to me. Um, and she is has a dangerous power that she can't control. And the wolf turns out to be a man, not a monster. And her magic is a calling and not a curse. And it just sounds as if, um, she's going to have to figure out how to use her magic to return the gods and that the wolf might be a love interest. I don't really know. This but it sounds really good. really good, doesn't it? I'm not usually a big fan of Little Red Riding retellings. Little Red Riding. Little Red Riding Hood retellings. This one sounds like so up my alley. So the last five out of five on my list is going to be from Blood and Ash by Jaila, a.k.a. Jennifer L. Armentrout. 
now that it is April, I believe April is when the third book is coming out, correct? Very true. Yes, and I promised Lindsay that once the third book came out, I would dive into this because I am someone who, especially if it's from an author I love, yeah. I don't want to start a series so early on because as happened to Lindsay, you finish the first book and you're like, I need the rest of the series now. I have to wait oh. so long. And I know I'm going to love hard. it because it's Jennifer L. Armentrout. Yes. And I know I'm going to love it because it's this magical world and there are a lot of things to learn about it. And surprise, there's going to be a love interest involved. Oh, there is a love interest. I, <laughs> I'm i not going to dive into the plot or synopses because I can't even count anymore how many times Lindsay has done that on the channel. It's basically so, every video. <laughs> really Somehow is. I managed to sneak it in. Somehow? You, mm -hmm. you, you plan it ahead of time. I know you it's do. Very smart planning. <laughs> So, if you actually need the synopses of it, or if you haven't heard of it, I apologize. You are going to have to Google it, or just click on one of our other videos. Product placement. <laughs> um, I am just excited for it. It's going to be a 5 out of 5. I can't see it not being a 5 out of 5, because every I'd be other really book. surprised. So would I. I've loved almost every other single book that Jennifer L. Armentrout has written. I've loved her young adult romances, her young adult paranormal. There is one adult romance that I gave a 3.5 out of 5. We don't talk about that one. Um, but everything else has been incredible by her, so I, there's, like, almost no way that this could not be a 5 out of 5. Yeah. I'm really hoping it is. She's, like, my girl. Like, if I had to pick one single author to meet and never meet all the others, it would be her. Absolutely hands wow. down. Wow. There you go, folks. So, That's so she's gonna be, yeah, she's gonna be a 5 out of 5. There's no argument there. Your turn. <laughs> Thanks. You're welcome. So the next book that I think is gonna be a 5 out of 5 stars for me is City of Brass by S.A. Chakraborty. And this is an Indian-inspired fantasy world where we're following um, a girl named Nari, and she is a con woman. And yeah. I love books that follow thieves, con women, con men, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So she makes her living swindling different nobles, and one day she accidentally summons a djinn, and then yeah. she has to go on some sort of quest because she's forced to flee Cairo, which is where this takes place. Um... Actually, this is not Indian inspired. I'm such a liar. It's Middle Eastern inspired. Mm -hmm. So cut that out, Lindsay. <laughs> Basically, that's all I know about it. <laughs> cool. So, but I've heard everyone really loves this book. I think the cover is stunning. I do like the cover. Um, it's very pretty. And the series is complete, which is a big plus, but as Danielle just talked about. Because if I really like this book, which I think I really will, um, I'm going to move forward. But it, it looks bigger than what it is. I think it's a little over 500 pages, but like text is pretty big and there's like pretty large margins and it's like four the noise that makes delightful so this one definitely is looking to be five out of five stars and i can't wait to read it and i really hope that i get to it soon because i've been sitting on it i've had it for about a year and i haven't picked it up yet so shame on me shame on you very much shame ultimate shame all right, well, that is all of our five out of five predictions. In case you didn't notice, we both chose five, so we're sticking with the theme here. That's right. Um, if nothing you, if not consistent. <laughs> if you are anticipating any of the books that we talked about or you think that you're going to like them, let us know in the comments. Or if you've read it and you have some opinions, feel free mm -hmm. to share it. Please keep it spoiler-free, of course. Thank you for watching today's video, and we hope to see you in our next one. Bye! Bye.